We've created this graphical user interface of tic-tac-toe in MATLAB now. And instead of X's and O's, we have our character images that are showing up and randomly selected. It works for player versus player. Now, even if I select player versus computer right now, it's still just running player versus player. So I have to add in some type of computer. In this video, we're gonna be adding in the logic behind the computer. We're gonna start with the most basic computer logic. So just focusing on the ability of the computer to play when it's its turn and randomly select an open available position. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to take this player mode variable that I've created and actually implement it into my code. So I'm going to have to call it in a bunch of different functions and I'm going to have have to ensure that it's actually in those functions. And again, make sure that the placement of those variables is lined up where I'm calling it and in the same place in the function. The first thing that I want to address is if the computer goes first, I need to make sure that it actually has a movement. The way that GUIs work is everything's triggered by the user interaction. So this can be based on key press, mouse movement, mouse clicks, clicking buttons, however you decide to set that up in your GUI. In this particular GUI, everything's triggered by clicking these different buttons that are available on the screen. So I need to make sure that if the computer is going first, the computer actually goes first. It doesn't wait to be triggered by the user clicking a button. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna say, if the computer is going first, I'm gonna randomly select any position and have the computer go there. Now I could also say, I'm always gonna have the computer select the middle position or a certain position based on the logic I wanna code in. But again, I'm just creating this computer that's randomly playing any position that's available. So I'm just gonna have it randomly select a certain position. So right now I have my computer before all my functions, before anything happens with my user. This is just if it's going to go first. If it doesn't go first, it just bypasses this code. But I also need to think about, okay, how is my computer going to play once we get into the game? So once my user selects, I need to react and have the computer automatically select a position too. So this will all be inside of the functions. So after the callback function of the user clicking one of the buttons is triggered, then I need to have my computer be playing. So previously I had everything if there was a tie or if there was a win in my main code here. But in this case, I'm gonna have to do this twice. I'm going to need to run this code when the player goes and then after the computer goes as well. I don't wanna copy paste this code inside of the same script again, because then I'm gonna have repeating lines of code and it's gonna take up a ton of space and it's harder to look at. So this is the beauty of programmer defined functions. Now I'm gonna take all this code, put it in a programmer defined function, ensure that I have the correct input parameters and return variables. And then I can call that function twice in my main script where it's relevant. So along with this, I'm also gonna create another programmer defined function for my computer program playing a position. So again, right now I'm just doing a dumb computer that's picking any open position. It doesn't have any strategy, but I still want to put this in a function as well, because eventually if I want to add strategy to that computer, then I already have a place for it. I can add it all in a separate script file and I don't have to worry about it getting too messy inside of this main GUI file. So when I'm going in and I'm coding this, as I said, I'm just going to look for open position. So I'm using the find function to find any open position, which is represented by zeros and remember one, negative one are my players. And then when there's an open position, wherever it is, I'm going to randomly select one of those and then just play there. So realistically, the next step of adding some type of strategy would be really just looking if there's two in a row that I want to at least block the other user, or if there's two in a row on my side for the computer, then I want to go there to get three in a row. And if I wanted to go even further, I could do a bunch of Googling or a bunch of reflecting on my own experience and think about, okay, what are some of the best strategies to get people in a trap where there's two potential three in a rows and then they're forced to block one and I win and get the other. And so I can add in these different strategies by figuring out the logic behind them and putting that in this code. But again, this is the foundation of how do I start? All right, so back in my script file with my game, now I'm looking at this code again, and I did a lot of copy and paste for my if statement to get all those position changes, changing the board, changing the pictures, all of that in place. And remember, whenever we're doing copy and paste, we have to be really careful about changing all the variable names. So maybe you can see the ones that I didn't catch, I didn't change yet. Because everything's embedded in a function, I can't just call the variable or look at my workspace to see what my variables are. So one approach that I like to take is actually typing the variable names unsuppressed wherever I'm curious what's happening to them. And then watch that in my command window as I'm running through my code and I'm testing my GUI. And this is an approach that allows me to see what's happening and better understand what did I miss, what's screwed up. 
So as you can see, the position variable here, I didn't change that to the position variable that I called for the computer changing positions. I was still using the same ones. So I kept just overwriting the person before. So I needed to make sure to update that position play to be based on the computer version and not from the previous variable. So again, this is a copy paste error. So be careful sometimes when we copy and paste, you'll come across errors like this. And again, this is just one approach of how you can try to find that error if you don't visually see it. So again, we need to run our code frequently. So when I ran the code again, I could see that I fixed that one error, but then I had another error. So I coded in the beginning of the computer going first, but those particular lines of code aren't ever gonna run again. And what happens is when I start a new game and I say play again, the computer doesn't go first automatically. It's waiting for a click because it's waiting for a reaction to the user. So I need to make sure to code that in there as well. So every time I restart the game, then the computer goes first again, if it is the computer's turn first. So we did it. This is a completed code now. Now it actually works PVP, PVC. We can play either way. We select the mode, the mode actually changes how the game is, and then we can play against this dumbed down computer that randomly selects positions. If you're working on all this right now and you wanna challenge yourself to learn more, I would suggest downloading the code that I already have that's provided here and then going and making it into a game of Connect Four. So you're making the layout bigger and you have similar logic, but then also you're looking for four instead of three or go modify the computer player's logic so it has more strategy embedded. So there's a lot of ways that you can modify this code to take it even further. And this will challenge you to reflect on the things that we've covered and practice this more. And then again, you can have your own type of program that looks your own way, your own style. And the other element that I didn't add on here at all yet is I didn't do anything with high scores. So that's another place that you could add more to this code to make it your own.